Welcome to a review of the RWD200 CD recorder dubber from TIAC. And as you have seen in my other review of a Philips CD recorder and CD dubber or copier, um, you're going to see some very similar uh, attributes to both of those machines and you can check out my other review of the Philips model. But uh, let's just take a quick look on the inside of this unit and you'll see what goes on under the hood. And you can see that there's a couple of uh, CD-RW drives here. We have the player on the left and we have a recorder on the right. You have the majority of your audio circuitry here and over here you have your power supply. So you can see that they've spaced it out so that the power supply stays as far away from the audio system as possible, therefore, or thereby uh, preventing any kind of interference between the two. Now, for demonstration today, I am going to use a CDR music disc, which is required in a machine like this. Any standalone CD recorder needs a CDR music blank disc, and I happen to use a Maxell brand. Over here I have a 3-inch compact disc single CD that fits into the center of the tray, as you can see here. I talk a little bit more about this particular format of CD single um, on my video that talks about a Pioneer robot uh, CD changer. It's a laser disc player that has a robot CD changer inside, and you'll have to watch the video to see exactly what I mean by that but it's pretty cool. <clears throat> so to get this going, let's go ahead and put the discs in and let the machine kind of initialize the two. So both discs are gonna spin up, as you can see there. On the left side, the machine has already detected there's four tracks. And the blank disc takes a little bit longer for it to determine that it's actually a blank and whether it's a compatible blank. All right, so now it finally says, well, it says reading, of course, right now. All right, well, while it takes its time, oh, and of course, as soon as I say something, it quits. All right, so it's a blank. Now, that 1718 you're seeing on the screen there, that's the minutes that are on the disk on the left. So it's saying you have four tracks, 17 minutes, 18 seconds, and then on the right, you have a blank disk. All right, so you have a, uh, a VU meter on the front here that you can use to uh, set your levels. Although when I plugged an analog source into this, it didn't seem like I had much control over the analog volume, even though there's a, a digital record level here. Apparently it only relates to um, a digital source. So if you have your optical or your coaxial inputs, on the back of this unit, then you can control the volume. But for analog, it's automatic, which is kind of odd. It doesn't give me much time to tweak, right? Or much ability to tweak. I do not have the remote that came with this since I got it at a thrift store, but uh, there is a remote sensor on the front with a headphone jack. You have your input selector here, which when I press it, shows that you can switch between your analog, optical, and coaxial inputs on the back. Okay. You have a dubbing mode here, which is uh, 1x and 2x. Ironically, unlike the Philips machine that I reviewed, it doesn't just dub it as crazy high speed as it can. It will physically play the disc at double speed, and we'll see that here in a minute, while it records. So it's more like a tape deck in the way it uh, it dubs, which is just strange. Why can't it just beef it up to 36x and copy your disc really quick? Who knows? You have your uh, open and close button here and then your controls for this particular CD deck. And then over here you have more controls because this is the record side. And you can sync one and all. You can finalize, erase. For Those are for, uh, for your CD-RW discs. And then you have your regular controls here, and then of course that, that digital uh, level control that we talked about a minute ago. 
So it's pretty easy standard operation. It uh, it almost matches my Optimus uh, DCC uh, player recorder here in color. And of course my light on my phone kind of shows you that the other one is a little bit lighter gray as opposed to black. So how do you make a disc? What do you do? Well, we're all set and ready to go actually. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hit dubbing mode right here. And we're gonna say dubbing high, all right? When you come over here, after you press your selection, you're just going to hit enter, well, this play button. That's your enter key. So let's fire it up. Here we go. So you'll see both of the machines uh, flying into action there on the top. And you can hear the music in the background. This is a single of Foreigner's I Don't Want to Live Without You. And just like a cassette deck, it's playing it at double speed. Time flies when you're dubbing fast. All right, we'll go ahead and interrupt it. I'm gonna hit stop here. Okay, now PMA right, I don't know if that's the same as TOC right, but in any case, uh, TOC means table of contents. I'm not sure what PMA means. All right, so let's go ahead and see if our song recorded. I'm gonna go ahead and just hit play over on this side. disc spinning here on top. <laughs> yep, looks like it recorded just fine. Now to make it simpler here for uh, time uh, constraints, we will show you how the what the final step is going to be. So let's say you've made your mix CD as opposed to a mix tape. You've made your mix CD. You've got all your analog and different tracks added. Because of course, as soon as you hit record, it's going to prompt you to um, go to the next track. You can see there, see it already queued up track two. It's ready to go, and I could actually record from an analog source at this point. So I can mix and match songs off CDs and cassettes and reel-to-reels -reels and eight tracks and laser discs and anything else I have an audio source from. So um, I'll tell you what's really cool is the fact that most cars nowadays still have CD players in them. So it's kind of fun to make a really high quality mix CD to play on your car stereo. And um, just, a, just a, a familiar use for such a thing such as this or to make your own CD like if you're in a band or something and you want to make a really high quality uh, digital version of your music you can uh, certainly use a CD recorder for that but there is one more step involved before we can get hand this disc to someone else to play in their car or whatever and that's this button here and that's finalize so as soon as I hit the finalize button I'm again gonna hit enter and it will spin into action and it will write the table of contents on there. Notice here it says no TOC. It also says analog. <clears throat> so as soon as it's done finalizing, we will have a disc that is playable in any CD player, CD Walkman, car stereo, boom box, maybe a Hello Kitty um, portable CD player for your niece, whatever it happens to be. Of course, my niece is older than, you know, than the Hello Kitty age, so she would probably be insulted if I gave her a Hello Kitty CD player with a, with a mix CD that I had made. Now, this finalized process takes a little bit. On the Philips model that I reviewed, it takes a pretty long time, almost, I think it was two and a half or three minutes for it to finish, which is kind of crazy. 
And we didn't even record a whole song. We just recorded a half a song there. So, so anyway, you can see that uh, this TX machine, this RWT200, D200, sorry, is, uh, is a nice deck. I didn't have to do anything to this unit. I think I cleaned the lasers because at first it wasn't reading discs on this size side. So I used a, uh, a Q-tip and some alcohol and I just swabbed the laser on the inside to get it going. And if I can get my camera maneuvered right here, let's turn it around and show you what's on the back. I'm pretty sure this unit was made in 2000 and yep, there it is right there. It was made in September of 2000. So this unit is 13 years old as of this recording and it's still going strong. You can see uh, as far as your inputs on the back here, you've got your digital in, optical, and coaxial. you got your digital out, optical, and coaxial. And then you got your analog line in and line out, which is what I'm using to, uh, to run through my, my retro Pioneer receiver for this demo. All right, so let's turn her back around here. Our disc has been finalized. It's ready to go. And so what the display is going to show you on the front here is that we have one track and a total of 1 minute 39 seconds. And I can eject the disc like that. Put it back in. And it's spinning the disc to see what's inside. And it makes its little mouse squeaky noises. And then it says, hey, 1 minute 39 seconds, 1 track. So if I go over here and hit play, my music starts again. All right, well, that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed this video and um, this quick review of the TAC RWD 200.